Alyssa was diagnosed a year and a half ago and she has a very common childhood leukemia. But unfortunately, like conventional medicines didn't work. She had the chemotherapy, she had a first bone marrow transplant. We, we were really lucky. We managed to find a bone marrow donor. So obviously she was able to have that transplant, but nothing worked. They were unable to get her leukemia down. The only option now really is palliative care. And they said, we can carry on looking, but obviously anything we try now will be sort of research, it'll be new. We can't guarantee if she'll survive it, if it'll work. And at the moment, she's completely leukemia free. This is probably one of the most underrated and underreported scientific breakthroughs of 2022, with the greatest potential to transform millions of lives. It's also a story of human ingenuity and how a real world application of gene editing and CRISPR technology, which incidentally won the Nobel Prize for Chemistry in 2020, effectively saved the life and potentially cured cancer in a 13-year-old girl in the UK last year. This story was first reported on BBC just a few weeks ago, but due to the holidays or perhaps due to everything else that was going on in the world, this most remarkable and unprecedented achievement went mostly unnoticed. Elisa was diagnosed with T-cell leukemia in May of 2021, and as mentioned by her mother, as none of the medical treatments worked, the only option was to volunteer to be part of an experimental treatment that would redirect the immune system to fight cancer using a method called crispr base editing, a molecular machine developed by Harvard professor Dr. David Liu in 2016 by improving the work of 2020 Nobel laureates Jennifer Doudna and Emmanuel Charpentier. I was personally blown away when I first learned about the genetic science implications of CRISPR about three years ago through Professor Doudna's work and started reading her book, which captured her scientific journey that led to her Nobel Prize in 2020. And while I could, with some effort, summarize the idea behind CRISPR technology for you, I'm not sure I'd want to listen to my own summary, especially if we have someone who took the work of Professor Doudna and improved on it, explain it to us. So here's Harvard professor and scientist Dr. David Liu describing the origins of the CRISPR system and how bacteria had developed this as part of their own defense mechanism against viruses. Bacteria evolved a defense mechanism to fight viral infection. That defense mechanism is now better known as CRISPR. And the warhead in CRISPR is this purple protein that acts like molecular scissors to cut DNA, breaking the double helix into two pieces. If CRISPR couldn't distinguish between bacterial and viral DNA, it wouldn't be a very useful defense system. But the most amazing feature of CRISPR is that the scissors can be programmed to search for, bind to, and cut only a specific DNA sequence. So when a bacterium encounters a virus for the first time, it can store a small snippet of that virus's DNA for use as a program to direct the CRISPR scissors to cut that viral DNA sequence during a future infection. Cutting a virus's DNA messes up the function of the cut viral gene and therefore disrupts the virus's life cycle. While adapting the CRISPR technology of bacteria to humans was a major advancement in gene therapy, a refinement of it called CRISPR base editing was needed to develop a treatment for patients like Alyssa. Base editors use the programmable searching mechanism of CRISPR scissors, but instead of cutting the DNA, they directly convert one base to another base without disrupting the rest of the gene. So if you think of naturally occurring CRISPR proteins as molecular scissors, you can think of base editors as pencils capable of directly rewriting one DNA letter into another by actually rearranging the atoms of one DNA base to instead become a different base. So let's take a step back for a moment to understand the basics of the human genome. If 26 letters of the English language is all you need to write absolutely anything in English, in the world of genetics, not just of humans, all you need are four letters, A, C, G, and T that refer to just four nitrogenous bases or organic molecules to make absolutely any living organism. And the sequence of these four letters, 
approximately 3 billion pairs of these four letters as appearing in our DNA, is the complete instruction set or recipe, quite literally, of how we're assembled from bottom up, one protein molecule at a time. In Alyssa's case, just one misspelling of these letters caused her life-threatening genetic disease of T-cell acute lymphoblastic leukemia. As it turns out, there are 35,000 known genetic disorders due to such pathogenic point mutations, and the two base editing techniques developed by Dr. Liu and his team, in theory, can repair or edit these misspellings in over 60% of all such point mutations. As you've seen here, the advancements in understanding the mechanics of our genome and our ability to fix and repair it is truly revolutionary in the truest sense of the word. While there is much to do to develop it further in order to demonstrate its viability and safe applications in humans and across many more genetic disorders, there is even more work to do to ensure that these advancements are developed and used in an ethical manner and not taken advantage of in any nefarious or unethical context, but to bring hope to children and patients like Alyssa who are dealt an unfortunate hand, genetically speaking of course, to no fault of their own.